Hey guys, it's me Meteor, and if you've seen the content on my channel, you would well know that I'm a big fan of Kirby games. However, as much as we may love these games, we'll very rarely even see them nominated for Game of the Year. We could look at this two ways. We could say the journalists are completely biased and don't know what a good game is, or we could look at this realistically. From one standpoint, Kirby games as of late haven't really done anything to push the boundaries, so to speak. To get a better example of what I mean, let's take a look back at the older Kirby games. Granted, the original Kirby Streamlight was pretty basic. You inhale enemies, you spit them out, and you can float for an infinite periods of time. But even then, I've never seen a game quite like that before. And then Kirby's Adventure came out, changing the way Kirby plays entirely to the way we know today. It was such a great change for Kirby, it's really hard to imagine ever going back to the old style. But in 1996, HAL would release something that would blow our minds. Kirby Superstar. If we consider the three traditional games that preceded this, this game was leaps and bounds beyond anything we would have expected out of Kirby. We got a full moveset for each ability, partners who also have their own movesets, a health bar so you don't take as much damage just running into something as you would from a giant laser attack, and who could forget all the hats we got for each ability. But the best part of all is just how much they changed up the gameplay too. It starts off with a small reboot of Dreamland, a foot race with DDD, a Metroidvania adventure game, a time attack mode with real-time dialogue, far more abundant bosses, and then of course Milky Way Wishes, where you can't use an ability unless you find the copy essence first. It was such an amazing step up from what we've expected, that when Dreamland 3 came out afterward, people hated it for taking a step backwards, despite the fact it was made by a different director. I would go so far as to say that Kirby Superstar was Game of the Year material for that time, if Mario 64 didn't come out that same year and completely revolutionize 3D gaming as we know it. Definitely a good second place contender in my opinion though. While there have been good Kirby games to come out since then, none of them really mastered what Superstar did great. I mean, it took them 10 years just to bring back the health bar. It wasn't until 2008 where they matched the success that Kirby Superstar had by remaking Kirby Superstar. I'm not saying the games released before then were bad, but there was usually something stopping them from being great. Kirby 64, cool ability mechanic, cool bosses, but it was very slow paced and quite simplistic. Nightmare and Dreamland was a cool remake of Adventure, though some parts ended up being worse than the original. Now, as a fan of Metroidvanias, I loved Amazing Mirror, but no Metroidvania should have one-way paths and dead ends. Canvas Curse, in my opinion, was the first must-have title for the DS and truly showed what the DS was capable of, but the lack of any real worlds, bosses, or mini-bosses kinda made the game feel like a glorified tech demo. And then there was Squeak Squad, but I'm sure you all know my opinion on that game already. Alright, so what's the point? Well, have you noticed a trend with these games I mentioned? Most of these games are very different with their gameplay mechanics. Yet, on the same note, none of these games really master them either. And none of these games really raise the bar of what a video game should be. But here's the bigger problem. While HAL has spent 12 years trying to recreate the success of Kirby Superstar, Mario, Metroid, and Zelda are going way beyond anything we've seen before and just blowing us out of the water. Because HAL spends so much time trying to replicate a game that was already made, when HAL does try to do something different, it's quite apparent that they're already well behind everyone else. For example, let's take a look at the development process for Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Considering we first heard about this game in 2005, I thought this project was good as dead. We then had an Iwata asks about Kirby's Return to Dreamland to find out why it took so long. Turns out they were trying to change up the game three times in development. One of these games was a 3D platformer, but apparently they never finished it because they weren't able to achieve the quality they hoped for. You know, judging by that screenshot, here's just a small little idea I had. Maybe there would be a bit more quality if it didn't look like a 2D vector game. <coughs> Eventually, after trying a third time and also failing, Hal just went back to the original design without helpers. But considering it was 11 years before we had a last real console Kirby game, and how great the game was, it's hard to complain. However, seven years later, we're doing the same thing! Considering the developer of HAL spoke about wanting to make a 3D Kirby game three years before the Switch launched, I was really hoping Kirby's premiere on the Switch would be a 3D platformer. It wasn't. Those hopes were dashed even further after an interview in Nintendo Dream. 
Kumazaki admits that Kirby 3D Rumble, and therefore Blowout Blast, was made as an experiment as to whether Kirby would work in 3D. They're just now experimenting with 3D in 2017, over 20 years after Mario 64! Even still, I admit, I really did enjoy Blowout Blast. For 8 bucks, it was more than worth it. Same cannot be said about another experimental game. Not only was Battle Royale the first game to use copy abilities in a 3D plane, it was also the first game to introduce online play. And it shows. Obvious connection issues aside, the online gameplay itself was laughable at best. You could only play one minigame at a time before you had to go back to the lobby to find a new group, online gameplay was locked by region, and you could only play against randoms so you can't play with your friends. When an online game is behind the times by Nintendo standards, that's a problem. But unlike Blow Up Blast, this experiment cost full price. What else can you expect if you haven't drastically changed the formula since 1996? Let me just clear up something here. I'm not saying you have to make a 3D game to be Game of the Year, and I'm not saying that 2D games can't be Game of the Year. But let's just imagine Mario with Kirby's game plan. 90% of console releases would just be a new Super Mario Bros. game, release pretty much every spin-off on a handheld without online play, and 3D Mario games just wouldn't exist. Something tells me they wouldn't be winning any awards either. If all you do is play it safe, nothing you do is going to look outstanding. Don't get me wrong, I love Superstar as much as the next guy. But like I said, when that game came out, it completely revolutionized Kirby. Why can't HAL do that again? Don't just ride the success of a game that came out 20 years ago, do your own thing. I really don't want to see this franchise in the same place in another 20 years. Anyway, I've said my piece. I'm storming out of here. See you guys next time.